Tonight on KGW News, a five year old kidnapped by a stranger is safe thanks to one alert mom who just knew something was off. I feel like it was by the grace of God that I saw him. Also tonight, cleanup gets underway. As protesters arrested for occupying Portland State's library parade before a judge. Then hey, this event was completely fabricated. How a man wrongly accused of threatening a FedEx driver finally cleared his name. And later. Yeah, this is truly a once in a lifetime, once in a lifetime find for sure. The rare sight on the Oregon coast that appears to have flown or blown in from half a world away. A very good evening, everyone. We begin this Friday night with huge relief for the family of a missing five year old. Thanks for joining us. I'm David Molko. The little boy disappeared on Thursday and tonight he is home safe and a suspected kidnapper is behind bars. Catherine Cook is in the newsroom and Catherine, you talked with a woman who found him. How did she recognize the boy and realize something was wrong? Well, David, as a mom, she says something just didn't seem right. She says the little boy was wearing a sweatshirt that covered up most of his body and a ski mask that covered up some of his face, but not enough to keep her from recognizing him from a police alert. I feel like it was by the grace of God that I saw him. Cheyenne Stallsworth was heading to work Friday morning when she saw the little boy, the five year old missing since Thursday evening. Portland police had put out an alert that night and Cheyenne saw it. The alert included this photo. It shows the boy with a strange woman on a TriMet bus. Cheyenne says when she spotted them, the woman was pulling the boy in a wagon near Southeast 151st and Mill. And I seen the little boy while she was bent over. He turned his head like looking like where am I kind of thing. Like he looked shaken up. Cheyenne called police hoping her hunch would pay off. Investigators say after the boy disappeared Thursday, witnesses first spotted him and the woman near this gas station on Southeast 148th and Division. Several other nearby sightings followed, included two on TriMet buses. Police identified the woman as 31-year-old Leanne Osborne. When they responded to Cheyenne's call Friday morning, officers rescued the boy and arrested Osborne on second-degree kidnapping. Then they called Cheyenne to tell her the good news. I was teary eyed when they called me. <laughs> I was at work like my boss was like, are you OK? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Cheyenne thinks of her own young child and how searching for her would feel. There would be no sleep. She's grateful for the sleep she lost, thinking of the little boy and his face that stayed in her mind for a reason. I will sleep good knowing that he's safe now. Hmm. A police say other than the suspect frequenting the area and occasionally seeing the boy outside his home, they haven't found a connection between them. It's also worth noting that Portland police spent all night canvassing Southeast Portland looking for the boy. The case is ongoing, so anyone with information on what happened is asked to call Portland police. David. Yeah, so glad she trusted her instincts and yeah. just spoke up there. Thank you, Catherine. Portland State students returned to class today as a tumultuous week on campus came to a close. This afternoon, a parade of suspects accused of trespassing and vandalizing the PSU library appeared in court where they went before a judge. Now, broadly speaking, it's been a much quieter day at Portland State after yesterday's chaotic scenes when police cleared the library of pro-Palestinian protesters, arresting about 30 people in all. And the majority of them, it turns out, are not PSU students. Thomas Schultz shows us the charges they're now facing. Late Friday morning, Portland State's campus was quiet. Students walked to class for the first time in days. After days of pro-Palestinian protests free, free, free Palestine. and occupation of the library before police cleared the library twice Thursday. It's a little disheartening. Abby Proctor is a sophomore at Portland State. She supported the protest, though not the vandalism. It felt honestly counterintuitive to the movement in a, as a whole. Other students agreed. I mean, I think protests are positive. I think it's something that should happen. Uh, the sad thing is I don't think the destruction is necessary. It was definitely a little troublesome, to say the least. Portland police say they arrested 30 people, many for trespassing. At least six were students. And police say some were arrested in the library, some in the PSU park where protesters congregated. 
Police say those arrests happened after protesters were told several times the park was closed. Many were in court Friday afternoon. Yes, Your Honor, our state has no objection to continuing release. Protester ages ranged from 18 to 60, and we asked protesters in court for an interview. All asked declined. Though back on campus, I think this was just disruptive without an end goal. To see all the destruction happening here, it really, it sucks. It sucks that it's happening. Thomas Schultz, KGW News. Well, let's give you a closer look at that destruction. Portland State's president now says she expects the building to be closed until the fall, expressing her disappointment and calling the library as it stands, quote, unusable. This is video from Thursday when we got a tour inside the building. The library team is now working to get remote services up and running and set up alternate study spaces. Important when you're at the end of the semester, right? PSU President Ann Cudd also saying she expects protests over the war in Gaza to continue on campus and says she supports that as long as protesters do not harass students or trespass and cause damage. Meanwhile, ceasefire talks are still underway between Israel and Hamas, though Israel also appears to still be planning an attack on the city of Rafah, where more than a million civilians are sheltering. The UN now warning hundreds of thousands of people will be at risk of dying if Israel carries out this assault, adding it's not just those in Rafah at risk because the city on the Egyptian border is a critical entry point for humanitarian aid. An Israeli airstrike in Rafah overnight killed seven people, mostly children. Israel says it believes the remaining Hamas battalions are hiding within Rafah. To get you caught up on tonight's other headlines, we now know the name of the man killed by authorities after they say he took his family hostage earlier this week. 45-year-old Andrew Song is accused of using a large knife to threaten to kill his wife and two children in their Happy Valley home. Clackamas County deputies say he also doused the home with gasoline and tried to strike a lighter. The SWAT team went in and two officers fired the shots that killed Song. His wife and children were not hurt. A second driver has pleaded guilty in connection with a street racing crash two years ago that killed a woman waiting for a bus. Today, Jonathan Pena was sentenced to three years in prison for criminally negligent homicide. Police say Pena was one of two drivers illegally racing in southeast Portland in August 2022 when he lost control of his car and hit 26-year-old Ashley McGill. It, it hurts you know, more than you know, just uh, yourself. You know, it's a, you kill somebody, which you know, happened, and then as well as you know, the family that, who, the, who love her and who you know, care about her, it's kind of a snowball effect with them too. That is Miguel's mother saying this is not a victimless crime. The other driver pleaded guilty last year and was sentenced to five years in prison. And a Multnomah County grand jury has found that three Portland police officers should not face criminal charges in the fatal shooting of a shoplifting suspect at Mall 205. In December, police say 33-year-old Tyrone Johnson, who had an active warrant for his arrest, was spotted trying to shoplift from Target moments later. Surveillance video showing that suspect apparently running from officers through the parking lot. Police say there was a confrontation and three officers fired at Johnson, killing him. Investigators say they found a semi-automatic handgun next to his body. Portland's 90-day fentanyl state of emergency period has now officially ended. Leaders today pointed out what they say are signs of progress, but also admitted there's a lot of work to be done. According to a newly released 120-page report in the last 90 days, over 200 overdoses on the streets of Portland have been reversed using Narcan. 28 pounds of fentanyl were seized and over 1,600 people were contacted through outreach efforts. 300 of those referred to shelters. As for next steps, Oregon State Police will continue assisting their Portland counterparts for another six months, and the county announced a new initiative to reach people on the streets. We know that stopping using fentanyl, even, few, few, even for a few hours, is so painful and hard which is why we're going to literally meet people where they're at with an increased number of mobile clinics offering medication-assisted treatment. Well, there's also a plan to develop an intake facility that would allow referrals to treatment from all sources that would include law enforcement, community organizations, and medical professionals. In elections headlines now, more than 9,000 voters in East Multnomah County will soon be getting replacement ballots after a metro ballot measure was mistakenly left off. Voters in three precincts in the Gresham area received the incorrect ballots that omitted measure 26244. That is the $380 million bond for upgrades to the Oregon Zoo. 
The county chair has ordered a review into how the mistake was made. Ballots in the Oregon primary need to be returned or postmarked by Tuesday, May 21st. Straight ahead on KGW News at 11, clearing his name, the dash cam video that helped free a man wrongfully accused of a bias crime against a delivery driver. Plus, we've got some breaking zebra news. See where crews have just spotted the stripes that were galloping through Washington trails and towns. She doesn't seem to want to come in, does she? Well, she might tonight. It's a rainy one. That's Newport rain pouring down to the coast. Rain in the valley here. That's Portland. So warm, but it's rainy. Really rainy. I'll let you know where the rainiest uh, spots are in Oregon. And looking at the rainy weather we've got tonight, it's actually going to be a lot of snow in the Cascades, and there's still a big warm up in the seven day forecast.